could have come like a mighty storm with all the strength of a hurricane you could have come like a forest fire with the power of heaven in your flame but you came like a winter Quiet and soft and slow Falling from the sky in the night to the earth below You could have swept in like a tidal This Advent, as we wait, watch, and wonder, God, God is, is with us. us. Now is the time for us to be on the lookout for God at work in the world. Now is the time for us to watch for God's love in action. Now is the time for us to get ready for Christ to make all things new. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, O Lord, to prepare the way for the coming of your Son. Give us courage and faith to proclaim in word and deed the good news of your coming, even as we wait patiently for that day when Christ will come again. Amen. The voice of one crying in the wilderness says, Prepare the way for the Lord. Make his path straight. Two candles to watch for Messiah. Let the light banish darkness. He shall feed the flock like a shepherd, gently lead them homeward. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. By Christ's coming, strengthen us to serve you, O God. 
through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah chapter 40. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to the city that it has served its term, that its penalty is paid, that it has received from the Lord's hand double for all its sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, with an arm to rule. God comes bearing the reward, preceded by the recompense. The Lord will feed the chosen flock like a shepherd. God's arms will gather the lambs. God's bosom will carry them. And the Lord will gently lead the mother sheep. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Today's Psalm is Psalm 85, verses 1 through 2 and 8 through 13. We will read it responsively. Please join me on the parts marked all. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people and blotted out all their sins. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying. For you speak peace to your faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to you. Truly, your salvation is very near to those who fear you, that your glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Faithfulness shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before the Lord and shall prepare for God a pathway. A reading from Second Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow concerning the promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will melt with fire? But in accordance with God's promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth, where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by God at peace, without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
Welcome to Family in Christ. I am Mark Rich. And I am Cynthia Holder Rich. We are missionaries in Tanzania at Tumaini University, Makumira. We have been asked by Pastor Nate Tuff at Olivet Lutheran Church in Sylvania to bring this word of the gospel to you all for the first Sunday of Advent 2020. Let us pray. O Spirit of God, fill our hearts with your love, that our, the words of our, my, our mouths and the meditations of all of our hearts might be good news and might uh, empower us to proclaim your good news to all who need to hear. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. The gospel reading is from Mark 13, verses 24 to 37. Jesus says, But in those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From, from the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus tells his disciples this teaching just two days before his crucifixion in Jerusalem. The passage and others from the Bible have been used a lot in the history of the church by pastors and preachers and teachers to try to scare Christians into being afraid. Afraid of some terrible events that are happening around them, afraid of the future, and especially afraid of God. We have been taught many times in the church that God is full of wrath and we're all just waiting for God to let it fly and then, friends, look out. There are passages from the Bible that go that direction, but the gospel according to Mark is not one of them. Indeed, this gospel is going the opposite direction while talking to people who at that time were very afraid. Twice in Mark, Jesus specifically says, do not fear, only believe, and take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Both times he says this right in the face of death, just when people were thinking they had to be afraid. Mm -hmm. Jesus never says to anyone, be afraid, and he's not saying it here in Mark chapter 13. So let's look a little bit closer at some of the cosmic language of Jesus' sermon. The sun, the moon, and the stars losing their light and falling from the sky, and also heaven and earth will pass away. Now, we moderns, we hear those things literally, but ancient peoples heard them symbolically. Everyone in Jesus' time understood the sun and the moon and the stars to be living beings, gods and demigods up there in the sky. Our modern horoscopes are in fact the remains of that ancient belief that the stars have some kind of power over us, which, of course, they don't. In Jesus' time, the oppressive, violent Roman Empire saw those beings as the spiritual powers behind the empire, guiding it and empowering it in its violence and oppression. So in this passage, Jesus is saying that the empire is going to fail. And please note that the Roman Empire did indeed fail. Mm -hmm. 
Then Jesus talks about heaven and earth passing away. Again, he's not being literal, but symbolic. He is describing here the separation between God and humanity, heaven and earth, as a thing that God will end. This is exactly what God does at both the beginning and the end of Mark's gospel. When Jesus is baptized, he looks up and he sees heaven being torn open and God speaking directly to him. Later at the end, when Jesus dies, you will remember that the curtain of the, the temple in Jerusalem, the curtain which was understood as dividing heaven from earth, God from humankind, that curtain was torn open from top to bottom. This is cosmically really important. This means that from that moment, God was no longer separated from humankind, but united to us. And that, that new unity is something in which we live. It is permanent. Heaven isn't ripped, um, unzipped, so it could be zipped shut again. It's torn open so that it can't be shut again. So when Jesus says heaven and earth will pass away, he doesn't mean the universe will soon disappear. He means that the separation between God and humanity will soon disappear. And that in fact happens in just a couple days after Jesus says these words in chapter 13, when he dies and through his crucifixion uh, conquers the powers of the world that were opposing God and that continue to try to oppose God. Let's talk a little about what that means for us now. And let's use a phrase from the Apostle Paul. Paul repeatedly calls his churches to live in faith, hope, and love. This beautiful, powerful vision of the good community and the good life that God is giving to us and calling us to in Jesus Christ. That vision of faith, hope, and love is Paul's direct, intentional opposite of the fear, greed, and hate that the world normally pushes us toward. Now, the evidence of fear, greed, and hate in the world are so obvious and so many that we won't bother to go through them. Let us instead turn our hearts and minds toward faith, hope, and love. In this text, Jesus emphasizes keeping awake. He calls us to keep awake, morally, spiritually, mindfully awake, to see the vast differences between faith, hope, and love, and fear, greed, and hate. We serve in Tanzania with people who are awake in and passionate about the love of Christ for the people of the world God has created. As we celebrate Advent this year and prepare for the coming of the one who brings us faith, hope, and love, we leave you with a musical reflection on this text, the great spiritual, my Lord, what a morning, accompanied by pictures of Tanzanian Christians staying awake and encouraging each other and us to keep awake and prepare for the coming of our Lord. Keep awake, friends. Let us stay awake to greet the Son of Man coming in power and in glory. Amen.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and, and he, he will come, come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic, Catholic Church, Church, the, the communion of saints, the, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. God of power and might, comfort your people and come quickly as this, to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. Faithful God, you teach us to wait for you with faithfulness and patience. Sustain and support us in our doubts and questions. Nurture our faith as we discern and enact your mission. O oh God of comfort, hear our cry. Loving God, you set the stars in the sky and breathe life into the earth. Renew the face of creation where it is in need of your healing touch. Guide our hands and feet to care for our fragile earth. O oh God of comfort, hear our cry. Steadfast God, you never tire of seeking justice. Where people suffer from discrimination, judgment, and injustice, speak words of truth and comfort. Sustain and support people with different physical and intellectual abilities. Accompany advocates who work for a world accessible to all. Teach us to celebrate the great diversity in our midst. O God of comfort, hear our cry. Tender God, you know sorrow and joy alike. We pray for those in our families and congregation who are not joyful in this holiday season. Comfort those who grieve, be a companion to all who are lonely, tend to those who are sick or struggling. O God of comfort, hear our cry. Eternal God, we give thanks for the saints who have prepared your way in the wilderness and taught us to continue their faithful work. Make their generous lives an example for all. O God of comfort, hear our cry. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and also with you. Your very life is an offering. How you live, give, and serve 
It is an offering of all that God has given back to God for the good of the world. Thank you for supporting the mission and ministry of tri-church congregations of St. Paul, St. John's, and Emmanuel Lutheran churches. Let us pray. God of abundance, we bring before you the precious fruits of your creation and with them our very lives. Use these gifts to your glory, O oh God. Spur us to serve others daily until the coming of your Son, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life, blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son, Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us.
Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Let us pray. God, for whom we wait, in this meal you gave us a foretaste of that day when the hungry will be fed with good things. Send us forth to make known your deeds and to proclaim the greatness of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Hear this good word from God for you. The creator of the stars, bless your advent waiting. The long expected savior, fill you with love. The unexpected spirit, guide your journey, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, share the good news. Thanks be to God. He came down that we may have love. He came down that we may have love. He came down that we may have love. Alleluia forever. He came to bring love. He came down that we may have love. He came down that we may have love. He came down that we may have love. Alleluia forever. He came to bring light. He came down that we may have light. He came down that we may have light. He came down that we may have light. Alleluia forever. Why did he come? He came down that we may have peace. He came down that we may have peace. He came down that we may have peace. 
may have peace. Hallelujah forevermore. He came to bring joy. He came down that we may have joy. He came down that we may have joy. He came down that we may have joy. Hallelujah Oh, yeah. um.